In this video, we're going to be going over an example related to torsion in thin-walled closed sections. I'll let you pause the video so you can read over the question and attempt the question on your own if you want. So, in the question, we have a thin-walled rectangular tube subjected to two torques, torque C and torque D. We're told to find the average shear stress at points A and B and the angle of twist at end C. We'll assume X is positive in this direction. The first step we want to do is use equilibrium to find the torsion between points D and E, and then draw a torque diagram. Since points A and B are located between D and E, we'll be needing the torsion to find our average shear stresses. So we'll first make a cut between points C and D, and we'll end up with only these forces. Since we assumed counterclockwise to be positive, then when we add the torques together, we get torque CD is equal to 60 newton meters. We can then apply another cut between D and E. And by using equilibrium, we get that the torsion between D and E is equal to 35 newtons meter. Keep in mind of these two values, because we'll be needing these later in the video. And our torque diagram will look like this. We can now move on to the second step where we now find the area of the mid thickness of the thin wall with closed section. A very important thing to note is that when we find the area of the mid thickness, we have to make sure we calculate the area in the middle of the thin walled sections. So in this case, let's draw out the area of the mid thickness using dotted lines. We can see that on the right side, the dotted lines lie in the middle, and since the thickness of this portion is 5 millimeters, then the thickness from the dotted lines to the outside of the tube is 5 millimeters divided by 2, which is 2.5 millimeters. The same can be done on the left side since these sections have the same thickness. For the top section, since the thickness is different, the distance from the dotted lines to the outside of the tube will be 3 millimeters divided by 2 which is 1.5 millimeters. Same can be done for the bottom section. Now, to calculate the area of the mid thickness, AM, it is simply length times width of this area. The length is 60 millimeters minus three millimeters because each side has a thickness of 1.5 millimeters. Multiplied by the width, which is 40 millimeters minus five millimeters and we'll end up with an area of 1,995 millimeters squared. Now for the third step, we can now calculate the average shear stress at points A and B. Note that we're taking the shear stress from the middle and not the sides. So points A and B will be along the middle. Let's start calculating the average shear stress at point A. Recall, the average shear stress equation is this. So the shear stress at point A is equal to the torque between D and E, which is 35 newton meters, which will convert to millimeters, divided by two times the area of the mid thickness, which we just found, multiplied by the thickness of the wall at point A, which is five millimeters. And we'll get that the average shear stress at point A is equal to 1.75 megapascals. Now for the shear stress at point B. We're still using torque between D and E divided by two times area of the mid thickness times the thickness of the wall at point B, which is three millimeters. And we'll get an average shear stress at point B equals to 2.92 megapascals. In step five, we can now calculate for this value, which is the perimeter measured at mid thickness divided by the original thickness of the tube. We'll start with the length at mid thickness, which is 57 millimeters, divided by the thickness of the original section, which is five millimeters. And we'll multiply this by two to account for the length on the left, plus two times 35 millimeters, which represents this width, divided by three millimeters, which is the original thickness at this width. We'll end up with a value equals to 46.13. 
Now we can move on to step 6 and calculate for the angle of twist at point C. We're told in the question that this tube is made of C86100 bronze. So by going to the back of your appendix, we can find the shear modulus G, which is 38 gigapascals, which is also 38 times 10 to the power of 9 pascals. We'll also convert the area of the mid thickness to meters squared to keep the units consistent in our equation. Now we can set up our equation where the angle of twist at NC is the summation of twist between points C and D plus the twist at D and E. We already know all these values, so we can just plug them into the equation and solve. Note that these are the corresponding lengths of the tube. From point C to D, the length of that section of the tube is 0.5 meters, and for points D to E, the length is 1.5 meters. Simplifying, we get that the angle of twist at point C is equal to 6.8 times 10 to the negative 3 radians. To summarize our final answer, the average shear stress at points A and B are equal to this, and the angle of twist of NC is equal to this. In the next video, we'll be going over a new topic, unsymmetric bending and combined loading.